Hey there guys, opening up a couple new toys with you today. I happened to go to the Toys R Us closing down sale and I found a couple of things on sale that they're brand new. Um, look at, we've got Stranger Things figure uh, Lucas here from the Netflix show Stranger Things. And then I'll make a video looking at Dustin. First we're going to do Lucas and um, see how this goes. Lucas, now one thing you want to do always is compare the paint from figure to figure. So there were three Lucases there at the store and a couple of them had pretty bad paint. They threw a lot of black paint really heavy under his eyes and it really changes the whole appearance of the figure. But here we've got Lucas. Now he's still pretty dark there under the eyes, um, but it was the best paint job of all the ones that I could find there. So. This is the one that I picked up. So the first thing I'm untaping, whoa, look at this. Okay, McFarland Toys, if you're listening, easy on the tape. There's so much tape glue on here that I can stick it to my finger. Not cool, guys. Easy on the tape. And there's a lot of tape holding in accessories. But first, let me get the figure out and then I'll worry about the accessories. So he's held in here with some plastic twisty ties. And let's see if we can get this. One. There's one more. So now we should be able to get Lucas on out of here. Now for the most part, I like just the appearance of the figure. Oh, out of the package. Yeah, that blue shirt looks really nice. Jacket, headband, belt. So this is Lucas dressed up to go to war. Um, let's take a look at, at what he can do. So head pivots left and right. And kind of up and down, the collar of his coat in the back permits him from looking too far up. We've got about that much arm movement up and down, but we can do forward and we can do back and all the way around. So you can get this guy to pose however you want. Now there are sort of gears here on the inside of his arm joints, at least. And I feel a little pop moving from one position to another. And so that's gonna present, prevent him from going loose if you play with him a lot. Wrists spin all the way around and do a little up and down movement. Let's see, this elbow, same thing. Spin around, back and forth, show you. Um, at the waist, what are we looking at? We do have some movement at the waist. And look where he bends, is just at the bottom of his t-shirt. In the 80s, people tucked their t-shirts into their pants. Cool, huh? And uh, old people still do it, like my brother. All right, legs go kind of forward, really far back. I don't mind that, that's pretty good. Other leg, same. And then with McFarlane, I'm gonna show you from the rear because the belt covers it in the front. If you want a leg to go out, there's a separate joint for that. He's not on a ball and socket type joint. Sometimes it's distracting. In this case, I don't really mind, especially from the front. Um, knees bend just about that much, so you're not gonna have this guy kneeling down because he just fall on his face. Other knee, same thing. I feel the clicking of the joint when I bend it. And then that's kind of nice. Just the paint job on these shoes is really cool. Uh, this is a, a well-modeled character. The, again, the paint on the face, I don't know that it's perfect, but the, the whole rest of the figure I'm really liking. So let's see what his feet can do. He can kind of Moving back and forth, side to side is okay. He'll do what I need him to do. 
when I put them on the sticky stand. So same with the other foot, back and forth, side to side. So we're looking at a pretty good range of motion and clothing that is detailed in such a way that you, you can't really see the joints. Um, I'm really appreciating that actually. So you bend a knee and it's not really, really obvious that there's a hinge joint right there. They've hidden it, which makes it cool to you know put on a shelf or put on your desk after you've posed it. Um, let's see, I'm gonna put him on the stand, if I can find the stand. Here it is. I'm gonna put him on the stand and then we'll take a look at a couple of his accessories. Mm. There we go. It took some pushing, but he kinda finally went on the stand. So good stand. I've got one foot totally off the ground and he'll hold that pose if I want. Um, he'll probably hold a lot of good poses. So the figure, uh, minus a little bit of trouble with the face paint. It's pretty cool, but let's see what else he's got in here. So he's got a backpack that I'm pulling out of the package. Again, awesome detail. McFarlane has been doing that well for 20, almost 30 years. Over 30 years? Whoa. Yeah, um, I've been buying McFarlane toys since the mid-90s and was always really, really pleased with the detail. So we've got the backpack on him and it looks like it's made of cloth. It looks like it's really got some weight in it and it is being pulled down by something heavy inside of it. That's really cool. So stand right there, please. We have a few other things, just like Eleven came with. He's got a walkie-talkie, which is a, an important thing to the whole group. So walkie-talkie. Um, is he going to be able to hold it? Yes, look at this. He comes with... Stand still. He comes with an extra attachable hand right here with a big peg in it just like 11 and there's a hole in the back of the walkie-talkie you just slip that into the hand and he's gonna be able to hold that let's give that a try so I just grab firmly here and here that popped out I hope I didn't just break it I always hope that. Okay, so you're left with a little peg. It looks pretty delicate. I'm going to have to be careful. Slipping this other hand on here. Ooh, don't break, don't break. This is much more delicate than other figures, which have parts that you can take off and replace. All right, let's... Don't break, don't break. Well, this hand doesn't really want to go on. And I'm afraid to force it because I have broken toys before. So, come on. Okay, it kind of, it kind of stays on. I don't think it's attached very tightly. But if you're the type of person who's going to pose a figure and then leave it, then great. This looks good enough. I think I'm going to see about putting the other hand back on and see what I can do. See if I can get it to stay. Okay, I, no. All right, so I think I've royally screwed up here. I don't know that I'm gonna get any hand to stay on him at this point. Um, I guess that's not exactly my screw up. If I try to replace a hand that should be replaceable. Um, okay, I think I have it. This feels like it's gonna stay. I'm not gonna take his hand off again because I don't need the stress in my life. And this toy doesn't need the stress on his little peg. Okay, next thing I've got in here is a bendy little flashlight. I'm gonna put this, well, I don't know how I'm gonna put this in his hand. His hands are pretty tightly closed. Maybe I can wedge it into one hand here. If it takes more than this much effort, 
I'm not really going to bother. Okay, I got it. I had to kind of roll it in there. And now he's holding a flashlight. Good for him. Uh, last thing is my favorite thing. This is his wrist rocket. Now, I've played with wrist rockets before a little bit when I was a kid, but I, the, the way I know how to put it on his hand is because I have drawn Lucas. Uh, in my other videos, I wrote a poem and made an illustration about Lucas. So what you're supposed to do, here's the wrist rocket. This is gonna be the part that you pull back, you shoot rocks out of. He's supposed to be able to put his hand through this bottom part because this bar rests on the top of his forearm. It's gonna be tricky. I've got his hand through there, so next he's supposed to grab the handle. This thing is really weird and flimsy, and I'm not gonna be able to roll it into his grip like with the flashlight. Uh, this, all right, toy detail. He's not gonna wear this like a regular wrist rocket. You get a lot of leverage by having this bar resting on top of your forearm. He's not gonna get that kind of leverage. So Lucas, you're not gonna really be shooting anything with this because you can't hold it right. But you can hold it like this and that's close enough. So I turn his head. He would be pulling this string all the way back here. It's a toy. It's a, it's not a real wrist rocket. So that's probably as good as we're gonna get. Um, overall, the accessories are, some of them are kind of weak. The paint on the face, I'm used to. It's good enough. Um, the detail on the clothing and on the, on the body, um, I really like. So that is Lucas. He can play D&D &D for as long as you like. And uh, I'm going to do a, another video here with Dustin, so stay tuned.